to those of you joining just right now who got pinged, welcome to the first Q&A uh, which we're doing. Sorry for the um, for starting in this rather sort of for those of you who have been here waiting with us. Sorry for the uh, for us fumbling around with peer tube. Um, none of us has done it uh, previously, so this is our first attempt at this. So thank you for bearing with us. So I'll take about so the way I want to do this is I think I'll take about an hour or so maximum answering um, any questions you may have. I'll be picking them from from the chat. And uh, so um, we are also live streaming this on PeerTube and um, on our IRC, you can join the Q&A um, uh, channel, which is bridged to the Discord channel and have your questions read as well there. Right, so there has been people throughout the day uh, already asking questions so I'll just kind of go up and start with the first one and we'll be going through all the questions now if there are uh, you know if, if it turns out that there's gonna be a lot of questions and uh, it's gonna reach the limit of time which we which we kind of have for this then you know I'm, I may be skipping some which I find to be perhaps less relevant to everyone in the community or perhaps you know g generally speaking less uh, interesting First question. So, when will the Pine Tab be back in stock? Um, we hope to have the Pine Tab back in production right after uh, Chinese New Year. Now, whether we're going to be able to secure uh, all the components necessary for production of the Pine Tab, this is something which we don't know as of as of now. It's very difficult to predict what's going to happen after Chinese New Year. Um, um, but the, the plan is that the first thing we want to do is we want to bring uh, the Pinebook Pro back to uh, to production on the production line and the Pine Tab uh, being the second thing in life. Now, uh, for those who do not know, the, the, the problem and the reason why we haven't produced either of these devices in quite some time is, uh, is specifically related to shortages of uh, both... Uh, good quality, affordable, and uh, insured uh, LCD panels. Um, so, you know, the pandemic caused a boom in uh, people purchasing uh, laptops and devices of that size, uh, which, you know, uh, which absolutely drained the market. And right now there are no LCD panels on, on the market within, like, you know, uh, within the price range, which we usually pay for them. Um, and uh, that come with an assurance from from the uh, manufacturer. So we've been waiting, and there is some indications that uh, there will be more panels available uh, at a reasonable cost right after Chinese New Year. So the answer is sometime after Chinese New Year, uh, hopefully within the first month of uh, of people coming back to work and factories spinning back up. So that would be. Um, um, late uh, February, early March, we should be uh, starting production again. <clears throat> Are you guys planning any uh, single board computer based on Rock Chip three five eight eight? Um, yes, uh, we are. Um, I, I think this has been quite clear to people who follow us in our community that. Uh, the rock chip uh, rk3588 is is in a sense the spiritual successor to the um, um uh, rk3399 uh, which made up our pro line of of devices now uh we, we we've gotten samples from rock chip uh, we've gotten an evaluation board from from rock chip which we are basing our design upon it's going to take some time for us to come up with with uh, with our own design based on the evaluation board, which in turn is going to expose all the I/O, and this is not something which we're going to be uh, selling. This is just just for us, so we understand how how the chip. This is quite a, a complex chip with a lot of I/O on it. So uh, we need to kind of create our own uh, EVB to better understand how everything works, and then only after we've done that will we be uh, going forward and pr creating our first uh, SBC. So yes, uh, but it's going to take uh, some time. Um, I have already written 
um, probably was it in last um, community update that is going to take a long time for uh, for the bring up of the RK3588 because it is such a complex SOC. So that to, to have it all working in mainline with the new GPU, the the drivers, the open drivers necessary, uh, all of that stuff, it's, it's going to take quite some time. So yes, we are planning on it. It's n not going to happen very soon uh, or uh, immediately, and it will uh, be a long time before uh, the RK3588 um, is fully usable. Um, I suspect probably over 12 months. Some questions regarding an NPU. I'll skip that. Will there be reseller platforms in the near future? Um, will the shipping continue uh, to uh, originate from Asia or will be stock in the EU? Yeah, so we are actually planning on a uh, having an uh, EU-based uh, reseller uh, in the first uh, by Q2 of, of this year. Um, and uh, this will be an EU uh, specific uh, reseller with uh, you know operating with whatever Pine64 has in stock uh, uh, in all of Europe bar uh, United uh, Kingdom and maybe maybe some other exceptions as well. Uh, but United Kingdom being obviously a, a big a big market for us so, um, um, I, I suspect that uh, we're going to be shipping from Asia to the UK for quite some time still. Is becoming FSF compliant or at least sim something similar to that a long-term goal of the Pinephone Pro or any other future products? Goal. Um, I mean, there may be devices which we uh, create that will be either compliant or close uh, to it. Uh, but uh, I don't think it is what I would say a a primary uh, uh, goal, especially when it comes to a, a smartphone. I think that there are so many things, so many radio elements, uh, especially with respect to LTE, um, you know, that are that are locked down by regulation. That you know, reaching full compliance there uh, or striving for it, uh, it would it would have to require uh you know some um some me mental gymnastics uh, to to achieve it i I, th I think that uh it would have to be right let me leave it at that so when it comes to the pine phone pro i i think uh, you know no i think that it it, it seems unreasonable in general devices of that sort I, I think are probably a, a bit unreasonable to, to think that we can reach FSF uh, compliance or we is this something which we actively think about when designing uh, these sort of devices no but will there be uh, some Pine64 devices which are FSF compliant yeah possibly possibly you know I, I, I will not rule, rule that out are you willing to partner up with retailers in the future? Um, y y yes, but possibly. I mean, it depends what retailers and in what regions. Um, one region which uh, is is quite important to, to us and where we would really like to partner up with with a, with a retailer is 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 India. We know that there are a lot of our uh, sort of people p people who really want our hardware. Uh, we have a large community in India, a lot of people interested. It is a huge market and we have significant uh, difficulties with getting our uh, devices to India. So for sure, that is one of the big markets where, you know, working with a like minded uh, reseller uh, would be uh, would be good. We have had. I I know that there have been some attempts uh, made at this already, but um, to my knowledge, obviously they have not been successful uh, so far. Um, but we will keep on trying. And uh, I have recently uh, been talking to somebody in India um, about the problems which we face with with shipping uh, to India, and they suggested. 
a reseller, uh, basically three guys, uh, very like-minded, uh, you know, to to contact, to reach out to them, and we're in talk with them. Um, more broadly speaking, you know, when you have when you have resellers, uh, um, the dynamics uh, of of sales shifts a bit. I mean, re resellers. Uh, by the very nature, they need to make uh, some profit, which also causes a shift of dynamic for for us with you know with a with with an external party, and this is something that we really don't don't necessarily want to, right? Because re retailers resellers sometimes push for you to to increase prices artificially and that sort of stuff. So again, the answer is. Yes, depends on what type of resellers, what what are their kind of uh, goals, and there are particular markets uh, where we really, really, really uh, want and indeed need uh, to make you know uh, a uh, to make contact with with a, with a reseller to 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 bring uh, many of our uh, single board computers as well as devices to the market. So yes, and I understand. I I know that there are problems uh, in particular regions in India and and in South America. These are being quite notable areas where uh, or uh, geographic areas where there's problems. My question is: Is there a way to see exactly how many Pine Store items have been sold? No, there is not uh, a way to see how many items have been sold. Uh, is there some movement on the Pine 64 meetup in Germany? Um, not really, and I suspect that a part of the the the, the problem is that um, there's such a large number of our uh, community members is in uh, is in the U.S. A sizable portion of of everyone who uh, who we service is, is in the U.S. So um, and within the EU. Uh, travel is still a, a bit tricky, especially now with the uh, uh, with the Omicron uh, outbreak. There are various, various states that have gone back into uh, lockdown or more stricter rules uh, for people coming out uh, coming from from outside of the EU. It also is quite uh, quite complicated. So I I, I think that you know uh, initially I was hoping that this year we're going to have Foston uh be be live in person but then you know but but they backed out so it is probably also not particularly reasonable for us to believe that we could we could make a live event this year maybe next year or maybe maybe next year uh, by this time next year we finally will be able to you know to to have an in-person foston which is you know so much more fun than than a meetup of however many people would turn out just for for uh for pine 64 kind of in-person meetup slash conference i was saddened by the incompatibility of pine phone pro mainboard with the pine phone chassis presumably the original pine phone chassis should it be expected the future revisions of the pine phone will follow same strategy um so um i mean i i i don't know what future revisions or versions of the pine phone uh, will follow what sort of strategy will follow i mean we are not thinking beyond the pine phone pro at this point i mean the thing hasn't really even shipped um so it's difficult for us to to to, to think you know further ahead um with respect to uh um to the to the pine phone pros mainboard not fitting into the the chassis of of the original pine phone it's not really the case i mean it is a bit uh, it, it's a tight squeeze but you could squeeze it into the original uh, chassis but i mean but you're still facing the problem that it is a completely different um lcd panel these are different uh cameras um you know there are other bits and pieces which are which are different or differently arranged uh i think there is also one or two flex cables that is a bit uh, different if i'm not mistaken so um it's it's not only a question of size but it's also a question of you know compatibility with all the peripherals that attach to the main board um um you know it, we i mean we are always striving to have the biggest possible um compatibility across 
our devices, right? And across generations of devices or versions of of devices. I mean, we were already experimenting with having uh, um, a a Pinebook Pro type upgrade for the original Pinebook. That never panned out. There were problems related to thermals. I mean, the the original Pinebook was a was a plastic enclosure. Uh, which kind of makes it obviously, you know, quite quite tricky to cool uh, the RK three three nine nine inside, you know, inside plastic. Um, but uh, uh, but we we always want to, you know, minimize uh, um, the likelihood that people will just end up, you know, throwing the thing out. Uh, if if we can make it an upgrade path for these devices, then we then we strive to do so. And we always test and, and try. I mean, it is conceivable that at one point somebody will sit down and make enablement uh, for um, in the for, for the new uh, PinePhone Pro uh, mainboard for all the components of the original PinePhone. It is absolutely possible. And then you know maybe it would be a feasible uh, thing for somebody to attempt. Uh, if they can manage thermals and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it is you know it. it, it it is it, it technically speaking it fits inside the the chassis maybe it's a bit tight there's uh, the tolerances would be very very tight um but you know as you can see with us creating the the pine foam, um keyboard back case we we always hope to have uh compatibility across generations and minimize sort of people throwing uh, uh, out uh, things, you know, if, if something can be reused or uh, repurposed, then the better, right? Uh, would you be willing to sell a pine book without a display to enthusiasts willing to go to the links to source their own display? Um, no, not really. Uh, the, the problem here is that mm, it becomes a support nightmare, right? Like, People initially, when we were introducing the original uh, Pine Phone, sorry, I need to take a sip of water. Um, when we were it, introducing the original Pine Phone, a lot of people wanted us to sell it as a kit, and so they would get the opportunity to assemble it uh, themselves. Right. Um, the the thing about it is that we quick, quickly realized that were we to do this, a lot of people would break the thing. Like they would, uh, you know, they would. They would break it in one way or another. They would break the plastic. They would, uh, you know, break the, all the fragile connectors and stuff, and it would become a nightmare. So, selling kits, no, generally speaking, not 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 for devices. Not when you have to fiddle around with, uh, you know, with, with screws and plastics and stuff like that. It just it's uh, it's it just uh, it's it's quite problematic. Just wait for 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 us to be able to source uh, LCD panels again, hopefully after Chinese New Year. E warehouse. I think I answered that earlier. I heard a rumor that the PinePhone Pro Explorer Edition will have a momentary eMMC bypass switch. Yes, it will. <clears throat> it's true. Um, it's uh, something which developers requested. It was something that was um, uh, debated, and this is um, something that we requested literally in the last moment. Um, uh, with 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 the vendor and there there was a mm, minor uh, PCB sort of layout alteration and yes now if you press the reset reset uh, switch um, on the uh, PinePhone Pro then it boots uh, from a SD right if you have a bootable SD inserted into it um, um, it it still says reset on the on the plastic. I uh, expect that this is going to be altered and, and changed in, in the future. But yes, but th this is an alteration that was was made last moment and is already present on Explorer Edition Pinephone Pros. It's not obviously uh, on on the dev phones. Do you think a open source mod modem is possible? Uh, no, I don't think an open source. Uh, modem. I I I suppose uh, IIA Games is asking about an uh, LTE modem. Uh, no, I don't think it is. How long will spare parts for the Python Pro be available for? Um, we usually have things such as I mean. For, 
to simplify the answer for as long as the Pine Phone Pro is uh, is produced, because what we basically do is we we order, let's say, a set a certain number, let's say whatever, a uh, hundred uh, uh, phones from 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 the factory, out of which you know whatever five we do not uh, we we choose not to assemble and sell them as as spare parts, right? So uh, for as long as the PinePhone Pro is is uh, manufactured, you know that's how long uh, there will be spare parts for it. Uh, with, with the with the PinePhone original PinePhone, we made a uh, you know we we said that we're aiming to uh, to have it be produced and uh, and available, um, including spare parts for a period of four to five years and. Uh, I think that's uh, reasonable um, also for, for the for the for the pine phone pro next question is pine funding planning on funding upstream work and then he goes on to quote uh, drew the um, um blog post from from yesterday or day before mm. I suppose the answer is Yes, but not in the way that Drew uh, suggests in his um, um, in his in, in his blog post and write up. And um, you know, um, first of all, uh, I must commend Drew on you know on writing up uh, a um, a good critique that is also uh, sort of encouraging and motivating and not you know. Unlike some of the comments which appeared under under his uh, blog post, you know, when when people uh, think that if somebody's critical, then automatically they need to sort of become very uh, hostile and opinionated about um, uh, about the th thing that the author is being critical about. So um, we are a hardware company, and we have no intention on um, on uh, on hiring anyone to uh to to do what he suggests but we already said uh a few months ago that we will be introducing a bounty or and as well as a contract uh system for people who uh, sign up to devzone and uh, those people will be able to uh pick up <clears throat> you know these contracts or these bounties and carry out uh, this work and get financially rewarded for it and um um so i i think we will probably be uh, achieving m much of what uh, uh, drew wants to see from from us from um uh, from the pine store as 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 you know as 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 a, as a means of funding it's just that we will not be directly taking uh, somebody on uh, we will be uh, putting out uh, requests that people do particular bits of upstreaming and stuff like that now i'm being a bit vague here because the details are still to be worked out um the dev you know devzone uh, has sort of taken a back seat while we're still uh trying to work out you know some of the some of the sort of some of the things back in the kitchen right of how this is going to work how do we decide on the contracts uh who gets to decide how do we involve the community in this right because this is also important because we want to have developers say this is something that you know that we would want to have worked on the um, have their advice have their input on at every stage and uh, we haven't really figured out how we want to do this uh but it will happen uh, it will, you know, this is one of uh, one of the first things on my to-do list uh, after Chinese New Year. So, I think we will probably uh, um, achieve the same result uh, via different uh, different means. Uh, will there be more products than the Pine Phone in the near future that get shipped over Poland? Uh, uh, well, there's going to be a a EU reseller com coming in the coming months. Uh, however, you will still be able to um, order a uh, Pine Phone or a Pine Phone Pro via uh, uh, the Pine Store. And get it shipped from, um, from, uh, from, from the from the uh, 
uh, EU warehouse. Will there be more things? Will there be more products added to it? Uh, I don't know is the answer at this point in time. We'll see how how the dynamic with the with the EU reseller sort of uh, pans out and, and and all of that stuff. But uh, we actually have been doing a lot of uh, work in the back end related to to sh- uh, to shipping and. I don't know if uh, if I'm really allowed to talk about this at this point quite uh, quite yet, but we we do have a, a plan in place to make it possible uh, to ship many of the popular devices on a very frequent basis. Now, especially to uh, Europeans, this will not resolve the you know uh, the problem which you have with paying uh, VAT. Um, uh, uh, plus, you know, whatever DHL charges uh, on for, for for their kind of for their service, quote end quote. Uh, but at least you you will not have to wait long for your device to 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 ship out from from Hong Kong. Um, um, yeah, so stay tuned, stay tuned. Uh, good question. Uh, so. For the time being, the Pine Phone will keep on shipping. Uh, if you order from uh, from the Pine Store, the Pine Phone will keep on shipping from um, from the EU warehouse. I suspect that the Pine Phone Pro will be coming to the EU warehouse as well. Whether other devices will come will depend largely on uh, how uh, people in the EU, uh, you know, whether they decide to switch over to to the reseller or or will we still have. A lot of orders from from the pine store proper right what about lower modems um i suspect he means uh, not modems but gateways um or this is how i choose to read his question um yeah so actually uh we managed to get our uh, gateways uh, certified um um, and uh, now they're fully compliant with uh, with certifications for three geographic um, uh, for, for the three geographic regions. So that is uh, Asia, Europe, and uh, North America. And um, I may I, I I think I may as well say that they are coming next month, or the indoor um, uh, Laura Gateway is coming next month. Um, so a, a bit of a spoiler. Uh, I think that the outside uh, lower gateway is planned for March, so uh, the following month. I think it has to just do with preparing the <clears throat> the outside casing, um, the the waterproof casing for it. Let's keep on going. I'm curious about the relationship with Pine, Pine community leaders and Pine sixty four. So the Pine store, uh, the company. Mm. Is it a one-way street? Is it a two-way? Is it a dialogue? Uh, is there anything uh, the community could do better? Um, um, I think that it is very much a uh, two-way street. Um, I think that uh, you know you you would have to ask um, somebody from the development community, and I mean we we can we can. We can ask uh, Martin. I don't know if you want to jump on and say how how you feel about this. Uh, you're welcome to do so if you want to. But like for the most part, I feel uh, that you know we are we are usually working closely with um, uh, with the development community and where uh, where applicable and where it kind of makes sense. We also work closely with the broader community. Um, this is so if you if you want to hear how usually how how the entire process of of a project uh, sort of come come you know come comes comes down right it it, it goes something like this usually uh, TL and I we kind of spend a little bit of time just talking among ourselves and figuring out what are the things that we know you know we cannot uh, compromise on or kind of is, or what we principally want the project. to to be right because if you if you go out and you start asking so imagine that we want to make a new phone and we go to developers right let alone end users and we say right so we're making a new phone what do you want to see in it and people will say well we went we want you know eight cores and we want 16 gigs of ram and this and that and then nobody's going to buy it obviously right and not that it's feasible for us to even produce it and manufacture it so 
uh, so we kind of figure out what's what what can we actually do so this is kind of stage one and then at that point we engage um, developers and uh, we talk you know back and forth uh, there's usually these talks are mm, uh, mm, are sort of directed by us by us asking so what do you, which component do you think works best here what what feature do you think we could add and then developers always uh, you know they, they push for uh, adding more features you know improving uh, revising the existing design uh, so it is a two-way street and then sometimes on occasion such as was the case with the uh, with the keyboard for instance um what we do is we with the keyboard specifically with the layout of the keyboard we we engage people in the chat and said look here's what we are thinking what do you think about this and then people suggested many different um uh layouts that could be acceptable uh, uh you know uh, to them and there was a lot of back and forth there were things which you know we wouldn't compromise on there were some things that people really pushed on and eventually you know after whatever how long however long it took it took a long time i remember it was you know probably six six or seven hours of back and forth w with the community we eventually you know settled on something uh on a layout that was ideal within you know within the um uh, general premise of the keyboard but i i don't know how how, how is it to how are we martin are we are we reasonable to 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 deal with for the most part uh mostly yes <laughs> okay yeah so descriptive <laughs> yeah i mean but we we do like even when there are disagreements right uh i i think that um we first of all there is a space to have a disagreement right so you you know where to reach me or tl and have a chat with us so it's not like that we're unreceptive and you know we, we ghost you okay fair enough <laughs> leave me hanging there okay I was, <laughs> okay mm. i i was uh i was hoping for a response but that's fine all right so yeah um well, I, I I don't know. Like I I can think of a a number of uh, instances where there were you know uh, some disagreements. Uh, but as I say, you know, um, uh, for starters, we make the space uh, for developers to have a disagreement with with uh, with us on a particular subject. Right. Mm. Let's see. What's the next question? Yes, to everybody who joined recently, um, and if you have a Pine phone, I very kindly ask you um, go to our um, blog and answer answer the community uh, poll where we ask about how you use your um, how you use your Pine phone and uh, what sort of uh, you know trying to figure out uh, w which is the most popular. Um, um, operating system and and uh, user interface and how people use their Pine phones. So, if you haven't done so yet, I kindly ask you to to go and answer. Um, this short poll is only going to take you a minute or two, and it really could, you know every answer contributes uh, to us better understanding the the community. Do, 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 do. Pine time to when. Um, so yeah, so I suppose this kind of circles back to um, to the question about how we work together with uh, with the community. I mean, it's not completely the Pine Time is such a you know such a standalone um, project in a sense. I mean, it is truly driven by by JF and Loop and everybody else who uh, you know and everybody on uh, on the Infinity Time team. So when when we're gonna think and feel that they are you know ready or interested in a pine time too you know maybe that's um that's when we're gonna start exploring it uh there have been you know some thoughts some kind of we, we were uh figuring out 
you know what what could go into a, a, a pine time too but it is all very much still on on paper there's uh, there's no prototyping or anything like that um being done i mean there's still so much um so much potential in the original uh pine time um i think that you know um, it's it, it, there's still uh, much software to be uh, and many improvements to be done on it not a question, just wanted to say you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that as a <laughs> privately as a compliment. No, I'm kidding. Um, let's see. What you know? When will the pine tab be in stock again? Um, so let me reiterate for those who came in a bit later. Um, we right after Chinese New Year, we will be. Uh, we will be. Um, uh, exploring whether we can start production of the uh, Pinebook Pro and um, and the Pine Tab. So in this order, with Pinebook Pro being uh, the priority and the Pine Tab uh, Tab coming second, we currently have this problem that um, that we cannot source um, reasonably priced and good quality LCD panels uh, for, for either, but there's some indication that after Chinese New Year, um, um, such panels will be more broadly um, available. So fingers crossed, you know, we really, you know, we, we know a lot of people are waiting, especially for uh, for, for the Pinebook Pro. And uh, I really hope that we can start production as soon as possible. Any words on Quartz 64 Model B? Um, very good question and one which I will not answer because I actually don't know. Uh, I haven't checked it, but um, you know what I'll do? I'll I'll ping you later uh, an answer in the chat um, when I find out. Um, yeah, good question, good question. I don't know. Um, let's see, what do we have? Will there be an equivalent to a Raspberry Pi Zero developed by Pine64? Um, no such thing is currently in. Um, no such thing is currently being uh, developed by us. We have, you know, in terms of future paths which we're exploring, uh, this sort of device is not on. Uh, not on our agenda, um, not currently. No. Will there be a Pine Tab Pro in the future? Um, unlikely. Um, I I don't want to come out and just say outright no, but we, um, um, you know, I know that sometimes people don't take it seriously, but the component shortages on the market are really, really uh, quite severe, and. Um, um, already doing the the PinePhone Pro was a you know a, a real challenge and making sure that that not only can we make it but that we can keep on making it right so it's not just one or two production rounds but um, but that we can you know keep production up for for the foreseeable future so again we want to restart making uh, the PineBook Pro that's really high on our agenda uh, adding one more design. Uh, or sorry, one more device uh, to to this would just potentially cause problems at this point in time, um, especially since we have you know we we're doing the the Pine Note and and uh, all the uh, single board computers. So um, I I don't think you will be seeing a a Pine Tab Pro uh, anytime soon. Did you miss the question? I hope you didn't miss it now. How probable is a Pinebook Pro revamp with an RK35588 uh, in the distant future? I think it probably will come as a no surprise that it is a very, very, very likely revamp in the distant future. But again, like you completely honestly do not expect to see a uh, you know a Pinebook Pro uh, Gen 2 uh, this year and possibly not even next year because uh, i mean ultimately it's going to come down to whether uh whether we can get uh, some of the fundamental io uh working on it and then there's this whole thing with the new gpu uh 
um, you know, uh, getting a, a, a false driver on it. It's, uh, I mean, it's, I suspect it's going to take time. So, and there's no point in, in creating a, a laptop if you, I mean, pe people treat boards and, and devices differently, as you surely know. And you, because you know how many people uh, get hold of a pine phone and then they end up being, you know, disappointed dis despite being war warned over and over and over that this is an, an experimental uh, device, right? So, um, you know, just because it is powerful on paper doesn't mean much until there is, you know, much of the fundamental, uh, much of its fundamental architecture is actually functional. What future I would like to see uh, the yeah. RK3588 Pinebook Pro upgrade in the future once it's in mainline, but then mm -hmm. thicker so it can have actual Ethernet connectors on it and it has yeah. space for all the extra I.O. this new platform provides. Yeah, would be, would be pretty cool. I mean, especially like you, you would probably want... You would, you would definitely want like an Ethernet uh, on it and a couple of USB... Uh, full like USB 3.0 like full A size ports right as well as USB C. What other interesting yeah. does it, does it have? I mean, it has well dual Ethernet, so can have a laptop with two Ethernet connectors. It might be useful for some cases, for especially for sysadmin work, and it has an HDMI input. Mm -hmm. So with the HDMI input exposed, it will also be able to act like something like a next dock. Right. Yeah. I suppose. By that point, you you pretty much are just talking about a whole new uh, Pinebook Pro because you're definitely not fitting that in the existing shell. No, 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 no I'm no. definitely talking about getting a bigger shell for it and then stuffing as much as possible in there. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, you, you know, sky's the limit. Um, my experience is, though, that people... Mm -hmm. If you ask people how much they would pay for, you know, for an ARM device such as this, then a lot of people would say that they would pay a lot of money. But then, you know, because creating one of these devices such as this from the ground up would cost a lot of money, right? Um, but then very few people would come through. Um, yeah. You know, because in reality, as cool as two Ethernet ports are, right? There's very few people who actually would make <laughs> use of it. Right? I mean, it is it is Definitely. super cool, and like you and I, we can agree that it is awesome. But I ultimately, I I, I don't think there is it, a reason that the modern trend is for laptops to get thinner and thinner and thinner. Yeah, but there's also still ThinkPads being sold as the professional devices instead of the ultra thin things but most of those things have also gone IO. thinner like there's the workstation grade ones but most of those have gotten pretty thin too is kind of my point yeah but that being a bit off track increasingly hard to get laptops with actual io on it no no i mean you guys you guys you, you guys can keep on talking away i mean my my my, <clears throat> my throat is dry and i just uh, i just took two sips of beer so I'm, I'm better now. Yeah, good. Uh, thoughts <laughs> I mean, on RK3588 as a mini ITX board? And I think awesome. it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. But I, I I don't know if you you were here, Thanos, when I spoke about like RK3588 in general earlier. But I said that it's a long um, road ahead of us, right? Like it's it's not it's not happening this year. It's like you you may see single board computers this year. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying that you're not going to see a functional. I, I mean, you may not see it even put into Linux uh, this year. Is what I'm saying. So the software has to be there first. So it may be two three years until you see actual usable devices like a Gen two Pinebook Pro or that mini ITX board you're suggesting, like. You need the software to actually make it usable first. There's no point to make the devices before then. Yeah, so like f for sure, this the strategy which we have now in place, which is uh, you know, single board computer first, uh, devices second, and then um, having the two 
sort of complement each other. This is, uh, you know, th this is something which we're going to keep, keep st stick with and uh, keep going with, right? This, this isn't going away. Um, um, I, I think that the Pine Note is a bit of a um, of a unique device in this respect because what it does is, like, we introduced the Pine Note without the e-paper working, but it would take a very long time to get the e-paper working if we didn't introduce the pine note do, do you guys I, I don't know if i'm making sense right now but you, you need the e-paper to be able to develop for the e-paper yeah that's right because like with lcds you can connect an lcd you you know via hdmi or you you can uh you know you may have a broken laptop with edp and just get it working but but this is such a particular uh scenario that this was absolutely needed Okay, will the next version of the Pine phone have a modem with support for band 6671 or perhaps a swappable modem module? I mean, we are here in sort of in fantasy land because we're speculating about like hardware, which I haven't really thought about and we internally haven't thought about. Uh, I don't know about the bands. Um, um, what bands are those? Are these are these specific to a region or... or um... But swap it is, yeah, go on. It's pretty difficult to get a uh, modem that has like every possible band ever. Like, I don't even know if that modem is one that even exists, much less one that would even be usable in our application. And I was also going to say, in terms of the swapple modem module, sure, fancy land, it's nice to dream about that again, but that comes with its own uh, disadvantages. Hint, hint. Yeah, I, I, I suppose. Um, um, yeah, I mean, a swappable mo modem uh, adds to you know, design cost and obviously, uh, you know, you, if, if you have the modem on a, on, a, on a separate PCB, it adds to the bulk of the device, right? So, <clears throat> uh, I, I personally, I'm, I'm not sure how many people want this feature. I mean, as cool as it sounds, I mean, you, you know, there is one, one philosophy which I learned from from TL, uh, and those of you who are listening and don't don't know who TL is, uh, TL is uh, is is uh, the owner of of the Pine Store and um, and the founder of the community. Uh, you know, one of the things he said is uh, to me early on when I was pushing for something internally, he said, you know, it's 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 not a good idea to make everyone pay for something very few people want like to, you know you, you're forcing many people to to pay for for a feature that a very small number of of the community base wants right and i'm not so sure how many people uh who would have the option to exchange you know the modem inside their phone would actually go on and exchange the modem in their phone i mean i'm sure that many of you will jump in now in the chat and say you you would uh, fair enough. I'm sure. I'm sure there are some who would. And and to some extent, there is a plausible meaning for that. Like in the case of if we could only get modems that were good for say one for North America, one for Europe, one for Asia. But that's not so much situation win because we do have the uh, EG twenty five G, which does cover, I believe, like ninety percent of the bands in use in the world. So there may be like I'd have to look up what the band sixty six and seventy one this person brought up actually do, but. It does cover a lot of them. Like it is a properly global. Uh, the words got away from me. Global capable phone already. It's also not like the modem is really a part that's easily to plug and play. It took a lot of effort to get the the current Cactal modem working on the Pine devices, and even the slight hardware differences in the Pine Book uh, Pine Phone Pro versus the Pine Phone made that integration already harder and throwing completely different modems in there just wouldn't automatically work. Yep. All right, let's take the next question. I think you could um, do, 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 do. I think you could get now one of the dev devices but from All right, let me rephrase this person's question. Uh the, this person likes the Pine Note. 
and asks if there will be a community version so presumably community edition in 2022 i mean no because there isn't a uh, default operating system uh, for it there are no mm, there is no um, user interface for it let alone competing options right so um i know that people have you know uh, thanked and and um I think it was the the guys from NixOS have to, like, sort of put together uh, OS images with XFCE or whatever. Uh, but I mean, we're very far from running community editions of, of this at this point. You know, devs need to have some time with with this thing. And uh, sort of coming back to one of the things we spoke about uh, previously, you know, this is definitely a, a, one of those devices that is a good candidate for having a number of bounties, right? Uh, implemented for it uh, come March, April, uh, May, and, and going forward, right? Uh, when when we're going to be starting this program. Will the PinePhone LoRa adapter work with the keyboard? Uh, I, I mean, we, we haven't really intended for it to, uh, but I saw somebody hack in uh, the LoRa adapter no, sorry. Um, the fingerprint reader. No, no, no. Fingerprint reader and the LoRa adapter into a case just yesterday. Um, so, and I suppose it 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 did work for them. Um, so, is it possible if you if you have the know how? Uh, apparently, yes. But like we weren't really really planning um, on it. Um, these are meant to be separate, in a sense, add-ons. Um, um, for for the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro. Will there be a successor to the PVP? I mean, at some point, yeah, for sure. We talked about it a bit earlier. Like, at some point, there are almost definitely no guarantees, but almost certainly will be a Generation 2 one using one chip or another. Yeah, correct. Uh, cluster board, but with quartz or similar soon? Uh... Yeah, I mean, yes, in a sense. I'm not sure about cluster board, but uh, a couple of updates back, I spoke about the the blade, which is uh, a sort of a, a server rack mountable, um, very thin PCB, which you slide a quartz in, and you can you can take one of those server racks and 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 I can't remember the exact number. Maybe somebody can. Go back and uh, take a look at the update from mm, October or November, um, and and tell you how many of these uh, quartz sixty fours you can you can uh, slap into you know these individual blade uh, host boards, but there's quite a few. So yes, uh, but not in the same way we did with the Sopine. Um, let's see. Where's the next question? Uh, next time, guys, if you could, uh, it's it's quite difficult for me to pick out questions among, uh, especially when when all this chat started. So next questions you 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 have, please ping me, okay? It's much easier for me to spot the questions then. There's a question about the Pine Note. How's it coming along with the uh, video driver? We kind of touched on that. Like it had a long way to go. Yeah, I think that's also such a you know such a difficult uh, question for for somebody like me to answer. I don't, I don't know if uh, PG Wipeout or uh, Samuel would would be willing to kind of jump in and and provide um, an answer to that. I don't know if they're willing to, but if they are, or I see PG Wipeout writing writing in the chat right now, so you can, you can read it uh, there. I mean, I was blown away because like. People have been asking me, when do I think we're gonna see you know Linux booting with uh, e with ePaper enabled? And I was saying you know it's gonna take it's gonna take a while. It it won't be anytime soon. This isn't happening anytime soon. 
and then you know it just kind of happened uh you know when it didn't happen i mean somebody samuel specifically uh, samuel holland put in a lot of time and effort and and made it happen you know in working together with with others as well right so um but it happened much sooner than um than i expected um um yeah i think the next good question would be anything that we could tell them about additional risk five products that sounds like a fun one um we definitely 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 are interested in risk five and this is definitely a field which we want to explore um um this year for sure and um i'm i'm i i i'm afraid i'm i'm super sorry i'd love to tell you but you know as as many of you know the reason why i don't sometimes tell things is so that you don't get disappointed that if they don't pan out right so there are so many times where i always wanted to to tell you about you know this project or that project you know the, the pinephone pro being a, a prime example but with you know as as with the pinephone pro we literally did not know if we can pull it off until like maybe a, a month and a half before, prior to the announcement so uh, it's always been some, yeah there's been some fun things you told me about that just didn't come to be yes absolutely so there are fun things you know we were which we were hoping for but then reality check and the current uh you know situation on the market and, and things just don't pan out the way we would like them to so uh, is there a practical self-learning track that could lead someone to being able to design hardware on the same level as Pine64, potentially becoming a future team member? Uh, that is not a question to me, I'm afraid. Um, not something I could... I, I could cover that a little bit. Like a uh, hardware design, especially on the scale of making, like, let's say, a Pine phone, for example... It's something that you basically have to have like a four plus year degree on like the traditional way. Like you don't have to have a degree to learn how to do it, but you're talking about that level of time investment and know how to do that. So that's not really this. Like we're not looking to start Pine 64 University here. Let's put it that way. Yeah, let me let me go back to um, uh, to Gillum's question about uh, risk five just for one second. Um, I think that, you know, if everything goes well, uh, you will be seeing more than one Risk uh, Five uh, project from from us. Sorry, guys. Sorry for pausing, but uh, OBS just told me that it is, that it has disconnected. You're not disconnected. Oh well, OBS told me that it that it has been yeah. OBS disconnected. Oh, you know why it's disconnected? It's only because PeerTube only permits uh, one hour of uh, of streaming, and we have just exhausted this one hour. So there's a lot of people who are very upset with us right now. But they have to. But um, could somebody please type it out in the chat so people in IRC know? Are there a lot of people in IRC? So apologies. Uh, Apology. Yeah, somebody please write write it out to them. I'll, I'll in, do it. Yeah, thank you. So I need to click stop streaming without stopping to record. Or maybe I'll just keep it error. I'll allow it to keep on erroring out because uh, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to mess anything up by accident. Uh, so back to the risk uh, five thing. Uh, like um, yeah, like we we definitely are thinking uh, about. Uh, about potential uh, products and uh if everything goes well we we probably you will be seeing more than one thing from us uh, using this technology it would be quite exciting since a lot of the options for risk 5 hardware i've seen is either uh pretty slow or pretty expensive so it would be nice to have something in between there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and definitely this is something you know which we we are looking at let's say a number of different sort of tiers of devices using this technology right so um um yeah that's that's it i'll leave it there how's pine one coming along yeah i i think i spoke about that uh um some time ago uh um 
um, pun one kind of did not pan out between us and an all winner, and that's kind of just that. Pine toast soon. Mm, maybe, maybe. Never know. Never know. Um, do we have? I'm still waiting on the pine television. Pine television. Pine vision. Yeah, pretty cool. Pine vision. Pine vision. A bit hard to ship. A bit hard to ship, indeed. Unless it would be like you know, um, unless it would be like a TV box. Um, that that's, would be better. That would be better. Wouldn't that'd, it? that'd be more practical. But yeah. just think about it. the smart TV that respects your privacy. Like, there's a tagline right there. You know what? Like, I've I've spoken. Yeah, yeah go 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 on more more time. You would you would need a platform with an HDMI input basically to have some input switching, so you can connect devices to your smart TV. But uh, luckily, there's such an SOC upcoming. Yeah. So you guys. Um, I've spoken about this in like in private chat so many times so that people almost already know, but I've been internally advocating for a very long time that we make a um, an open source uh, a device similar to like whatever Amazon makes, whatever they call little fire sticks or whatnot. So except it wouldn't be streaming from you know Netflix or or Amazon uh, Live or whatever it's called. It would it would stream, stream from the, the NAS. Pine channel. No, it wouldn't stream the Pine channel. It would stream from your local NAS, right? But I mean, but it would be it, 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 it would be like a XPMC boxware thing. I still can't bring myself to call it Cody. Sorry, but XPMC slash Cody streaming stick. Yeah, I mean that's what it would be, and like I don't know, maybe there are other people who like who uh, I don't know who are parents or whatever and have like you know more places and 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 like they got say two kids and you know they don't want necessarily to buy anything uh, expensive and especially not like you know not like some random spy box from from amazon or ebay and but this would be a tiny little stick it would just plug into your tv it wouldn't have much storage it wouldn't have much ram but it would allow you to stream things from from your local network and it would use yeah like cody or what what's the thing that plasma has a big screen um yeah. KD plasma big screen yes. Yeah, I don't know how that's coming along. Like I, 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 I haven't really read anything about it in quite some time. But I mean, it would use something like that. I mean, it's, presumably it could also use just a regular uh, desktop, as inconvenient as that would be. So, anyways, um, you know, this is something that I have been advocating for for quite some time but we're not making it just to make it clear but it, I, I think it would be a, a great thing especially if we could meet a particular price price but you're but you're talking about now to try to force tl's hand i see how it is <laughs> no no i'm not trying to you gotta get gotta get the community interested <laughs> so when will this be released <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, so it's not happening but i think it would be a cool thing will the eu warehouse carry other uh battery products um a b c d oh yeah he can't hear me um but i'll answer the question anyways because this will be going up on on uh, on youtube and other uh, platforms so he can he can listen to his question being answered i answered this before but i'll answer it again we will have uh we will have a reseller in the eu that will uh, carry many of the popular products um uh the warehouse may have additional uh, battery operated d devices uh, uh depending on how the situation and how the work with, with the with the with the reseller uh, pans out and works out in the next uh, say whatever six or nine months okay do, 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 do. Is a Pine phone with 5G planned in the future? No, it's not. Well, I mean, I mean, how distant of a future? I mean, it's not not planned right now. We haven't talked about it seriously. No, that was four to five years, right? Not forty-five. Yes, it was four to five years. Um. Will there be a V2 of the Pine Soul? Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, the Pine Soul is um, 
uh, by far our most popular uh, device in terms of like sales numbers, right? Um, crazy amounts of this thing are are selling every month. So, uh, I mean, a V two. I don't know. I mean, what? How much is there to to change to a soldering iron? I mean, you're welcome to put it in the chat if you think that there's some crazy things that can be still done. To a soldering. Like I mean, yeah. it, it could have higher heat capacity, but then you need to get into the really exotic USB power delivery power supplies. Because, like, the highest standard one is 60 watts, which the current Pinesaw already supports. I think there's a 100-watt standard, but good luck finding something that will supply that. Yeah. But, but yeah. you can high, go higher, higher on the barrel jack. Yeah. I, I mean, I suppose you could... We could, at one point, if there's going to be enough interest, you know, um, think of something along the lines of like a soldering station or something like that you know um uh you know the the reason why the pine salt has been so um uh, so successful is not because it is open source right and it's it's just because we came in and we disrupted a, an established uh you know an established market which was kind of stagnated for a very long time right um, where the where the best thirty dollar soldering iron you could get is basically one off the rack at the local hardware store, and it's one of the like forty watt ones just plugged directly into the wall outlet. Yeah, basically. So, yeah. Um, so, um, I clearly there is a need for an inexpensive but capable iron, and I think the pine saw is doing that well. I mean, I I I know. I don't know of any plans of, uh, you know, of uh, changing or altering uh, the pine soul. Uh, but maybe in the future, you know, I, I wouldn't say no. Uh, it's it's such a popular device that if there are improvements to be made, which certainly we'll be looking at at making them, right? It might be nice to make a pine soul that takes the the Hakko tips instead of the TS hundred tips. Uh, could you repeat? Sorry, I, I was reading a question and I missed what you said. <laughs> it would maybe be nice to uh, make a pine sill revision that takes Hakko tips instead of the TS-100 tips or the TS-80, the the current tips. The yeah. TS-80, that's the one which has the like um, the, f the, 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 the audio jack plugin, is it? Oh yeah, so TS-100 tips, yes. Right. But the Hakko tips are quite similar to the current tips for the pine sill, except that the the end on front of the of the tip is shorter, so you can have your fingers closer to the board, making it easier to solder. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you you see, so there are improvements and potential revisions uh, that could be made, but it's it's not like this is something which we're thinking about uh, at this point in time. Yeah. Will there be an NFC um, NFC back case? in the future um you know what M maybe um um so i'll tell you now that i have recently been uh, approached by a couple of people who uh will be running a kickstarter making a variety of different back cases for for the for the for the pine phone and the pine phone pro and one of their cases is an NFC case. So we won't be making it, but they will. Uh, so that's something to look out for uh, later on uh, this this year. So uh, it also speaks to, you know, how popular the PinePhone has become, right? So that there is a Kickstarter that's going to be running with uh, uh, back cases that will add functionality that, that we haven't planned on. But I won't spoil it anymore. You know, it's it's. Uh, I, I thought, you know, maybe this is fair enough to say, but, but they have uh, other things planned. Uh, in respect for the pine phone so when that's out something to look uh, look for right because i i think it's very very cool that somebody is um is planning to uh, to add uh, additional uh functionality to to the pine phone and to the pine phone pro something that we have not considered <sighs> yeah so the so the pine power um we are so I'll be I'll be completely like transparent with you. Uh, the Pine Power uh, desktop version, we are having problems with the with the vendor. 
uh, right now. Um, um, and I, uh, I don't want to say that it's definitely not coming back. But yesterday, uh, we made a decision to just pull it from the store temporarily. And we're going to see after the Chinese New Year whether it can, if we'll be able to um, work out something with the vendor to keep on producing it. Uh, is there somebody working on driver for this and that? I don't know. Did uh, Martel uh, thanked? Mm. Um, either of you want to take this question? Driver for what? Driver for the magnetometer that was used for beta edition uh, Pine phones. Oh, I don't know of anyone working on the driver for that, but it's not one of the hardest drivers to write. At least the sensor subsystem is relatively self-contained, so it's a great driver to get into kernel development yeah but i mean it hasn't hasn't it been enabled because surely the um, uh oh maybe not i mean does the does the factory test image does that uh, check the magnetometer i thought it did no it doesn't it skips the magnetometer on the new editions because there's uh, no support for it interesting right so um so maybe no one is and if you would want to do that or have a go at it. Here's your chance. Uh, I can't. No, not you. No, not you. I'm, I'm talking to the person asking, uh, <laughs> asking the question. You as in whoever's listening to the QA here. Yeah. <laughs> so whoever is listening to, to, to the QA, if you want to have a go at it, then if Martin says it's easy, then it must be super, super easy. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> right. I should also mention that I am not a true kernel developer. Have you ever considered a hand carved replica of, of a pine tree out of pine wood so you could sell a pine pine pine? No, we have not. But I think that Martin actually built a, a stand for a pine phone out of wood, but I don't know if it's pine wood. Was it pine wood by any chance? Um, I believe it's oak. Oak, yeah. Okay. It mm. could have been. Uh, it could have been some pine wood, but. Uh, That's really disappointing. What a miss opportunity. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. I even have some here. Should have told me earlier. You you could have at least used cedar or something close enough. Yeah. But that's pretty smelly wood. Right. Some people are into that. <laughs> Does Pine have any plans regarding uh, future entry into AI neural network market? Um, um, I, I don't think we have an explicit plan. We still hope that people will... Um, um, find interest in the saw edge and, and uh, you know, start working on that. Um, uh, you know, the, the, it's a bit of a chicken and the egg thing with, uh, with, with AI and, uh, like, NPUs, right? You, you need uh, some help from the vendor, rock chip in this particular case i actually think that did, did gamey go to sleep he did he what did a, oh that's a bummer because he's the one who could answer this question the best so time zones time zones uh moth um you know what i apologize everyone i will not answer this question because i'll just you know i'll, I'll just kind of go in circles about it and, and there won't be any anything smart that i'll have to say about it but what i'll what i'll do is i i know that gamey has done uh, a substantial amount of work on the so edge he managed to get it to uh, to boot to compute this is all on the bsp kernel right um um whether this has been you know picked up by anybody if this is of any particular interest to to people within the community 
I don't know. I mean, usually uh, these things uh, suddenly take off if there's somebody from the industry who comes in and decides to contribute back code, right? And this is one of those devices where there is an, uh, a possibility that not today and not in a month and not even a, in a year, but, you know, and even in two years time, will come in and say, oh, you know, this particular thing, this so edge, it, it looks cool. It, it meets our criteria. You know, somebody has a development team, they'll make it work and they'll contribute back code. And then, you know, it's going to be something that will also be, uh, you know, very interesting to the community when it's fully functional and it's su super simple to implement. We're when do Rock Pro 64 orders come with sips of beer? With sips of beer? Yeah. Uh, like, I, I think the shipping time would make that beer go not too mm -hmm. good. Indeed. I think it would be fine. It would just be extra fermented. Extra fermented. Doesn't it, doesn't it improve by, uh, with time? Beer? Depends on the beer, I think. I, I don't I, I think wrong wrong beverage. Like I know that IPA suppose was designed to be easy to transport by like by sea, but that this present discussion here we're doing Q and A for Pine sixty four, not a beer podcast. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um if not AliExpress, then maybe an official store in Russia. Um Alex. Hmm. Um, people will buy your products in large quantities. Yes, Russia is a tech country. Yes, and it is a great uh, it's a great market as well. Um, for sure. Um, um, you know what? We are doing something uh, in relation to Russia, right? So we are uh, doing something you know, to, to make our products more um, more broadly available in Russia um, right now. That's kind of what I'll say. Um, it's 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 not really simple with uh, um, with the phones specifically. Uh, and we have some problems re relating to to the laptops as well. But, uh, you know, we have been actively working on actually with with respect to Russia, we have been actively working on it for two years. Yeah, so I'll tell you this much. So maybe this year is going to be the year that uh, that we manage to crack it, and uh, there will be many more users in Russia um, uh, with access to our hardware. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll uh, I somebody asked me the other day in in the chats whether I could spoil. Um, uh, spoil a little bit uh, how how the how the poll data is turning out and um, um, one of the most interesting things uh, with respect to Russia is how many pine phone users there are in Russia right a country which we cannot ship to so the market is definitely there because people are finding out ways to to, to get these devices into Russia right so like we know we know and uh, we have been working towards it as well but there are things uh in the way that make it quite difficult how about a rack mount case for a bunch of rock pro 64s um yes please that came up a ton when we first announced we were moving our infrastructure to the uh, cluster as we call it like i cannot tell you how many times people have asked this and I believe at the time I did actually relay that to TL, and he was ba and his response was basically, "No, it'd be too expensive. You're better off getting some local fab to make your own." Correct. Why? Because mm -hmm. the, because Go the on. amount of people who'd be willing to buy that from us would not make the uh, economics of scale make sense. So unfortunately, that case is just a well. Technically, two cases are a one-off for us. Yes. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. But instead of a mini cluster in the server case, an AT export might be nice. Is there really a market for that? I mean, again, and we there don't... There was a market for the stuff like that Thunder X that has now been deprecated. There's not a lot of options below a few thousand uh, dollars now for ARM servers, so 
there might be a market. Right. So what would you do? You you would basically build your own version of of our cluster, right? Is that is that the idea or whatever well, Fu future SBCs? Uh, future SBCs, uh, maybe something that will take the 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 modules, the compute modules. Uh huh. Okay. But uh, in a mini ATX form factor or something, so it actually fits in server cases and can have redundant power. And yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, I suppose that the big question here is um, how much would it cost us to ship it, right? Well, um, mini ATX is not oh, that no, no, no. large. Okay, right, mini AT ATX, so, you're, so this person is not asking, right, right. Or not the case. Or not the case, right, okay. Yeah, server cases exist, you just need the boards that fit into them. Yeah. And stuff like RK3... 588 is already plenty faster than uh, an, a pretty nice server on. Mm. I mean, even 3399, like, basically all the online infrastructure for us, other than like Discord, for example, and the Pine Store, are all running on 3399s, for those not aware. Yeah, that's right. Um, all our uh, community services. Um, so that would be the forum the dot org website um the wiki the wiki the the file server for like manuals and bsps and stuff yeah the irc yeah and we used to have an uh, an x cloud as well right and oh and obviously dev zone right that's running on 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 the cluster yeah it well. is so me we... and Jamie still need to write that uh, series of blog posts describing the cluster like we promised it when we first brought it into commission like last summer but actually two summers ago now i think but we'll get to it yeah you have been uh, you, you're a bit late on that okay so why is there no 3.55 audio jack on the pine note it's an oversight uh but um it has to do with what reference design uh, we had to 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 work with um simply put right we uh i don't want to spoil things at this point in time but we are uh kind of looking to make a variety of not, maybe not a v variety but making some uh important changes to the um to the pine note kind of down the line right n n don't, don't think it of substantial changes and also if you are somebody who wants to pick up a, a pine note uh, now, as in today, uh, then fret not. You know, if you're a developer picking one up, uh, fret not. We will have um, these parts that will be going uh, into future um, uh, pine notes available to you as well. Tell a secret about the <laughs> risk. Yeah, no. HPC. That would be risky. HPC product. Uh, HPC? What's HPC? Um, High performance on... computing, so uh, like supercomputer mm. sort of stuff. Right. Um, yeah, no. No, I mean, no. I mean, aside from clusters and all sorts of clustering things, no, not, not a single. We're not going to bring out any, you know, um, ARM beast or Risk V beast. If that's well, I mean, for us to make like a single chip ARM beast, we need a like sing, single chip arm beast that we could actually put on a board and there aren't any of those let's say currently on the open market correct yeah well kind of like there's one that maybe but that's into different territory there technically are options but that's not in our current wheelhouse can you share any of the product ideas that didn't work out uh no I'm sorry. I'd love <laughs> No. <laughs> I, I, I really don't mean to be an ass. I'd, I'd love to. Um, the, there's there's more than one reason for it. It's because usually the reason why it didn't work out is because of a different party, another party. And it's usually simple enough for people just to figure out uh, why. And um, the other thing is Burn. just because something didn't work out now, as in today, doesn't mean that we won't be attempting it uh, again in say you know sometime so i'm, I'm sorry uh, but um, we we don't want to burn bridges it's a bad yeah. idea in general 
Yeah, it is a uh, so uh, bad bummer. Pier two has a dumb design. If it only lets one hour max, it is a bad design. I it is a bit silly. Um, I I think live streaming is a new addition for them, so it's a little understandable. Apparently, it's an instance setting, not uh, a peer tube thing in general. Mm -hmm. Can the stream be restarted? Um, were there a lot of were there a lot of people there? Were there a lot of people on the on the stream? Like uh, I thought, you restarted a second set of it. I haven't checked the stream since I'm here. No, no, no. Like I I tried streaming again, but it but it told me no. It just says no disconnected. So it does not permit me to to restart. This I I haven't seen people complaining about it, but. So I haven't people. been paying, haven't been watching that. So yeah, I don't. I actually don't know how many people were watching it at the peak of it, but I think we're gonna be slowly, slowly. What what I think we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple more uh, questions from here, okay, and then in some, um, should we say, ten minutes or so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the stage, and we can just go to casual hangouts. How how many casual? How many people can go into ha casual hangouts? Uh, I don't think we have a limit. No, we don't have a limit set on that. We probably do want to set one so people can actually have a conversation. Other. But okay, so and so what I think we will do is, and you know, in in a in some five ten minutes, what we're gonna do is we we're probably gonna be moving to to casual hangouts, and we can we can just you know sit, drink beer, and 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 uh and chat away, right? Because we have been running this for an hour and and 20 minutes at this point so yep <laughs> what about pine scope pine ar what is pine ar what would that be ar being what uh, augmented reality so basically vr right. but you can see through it to the outside world um t2 uh no pine scope but uh pine ar uh there is some person uh who is using uh, the original Pine phone for uh, some artificial re reality uh, project on Twitter. I'll uh, after the stream is done. What I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll ping you with with his tweet and you you can take a look at it. But no, we're not working on it. No, and uh, privately, uh, not not something that is of direct interest to me. What happened to that gamepad? Um. Oh, you mean the game, sir? Um, you know what? We we never went ahead to uh, to 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 work with them, um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that we won't be uh, researching a, a sort of a um, a gaming add-on for, for 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 the for the Pine phone in the future. It may not be this one. Um, um, it may be you know something completely different. But uh, there there is uh, there are a lot of retro gamers in the community tl and i uh also like retro gaming so a um um a keyboard uh, sorry a controller attachment for for the pine phone and the pine phone pro would be a lot of fun a rack mount case for similar right mm, i'm sorry for ditching that okay i'll ditch that Do you have any degree of customization with the socks you use order? Uh, we have very little. Uh, the The only uh, uh, options we had in terms of customization were related to the RK3399, and this is because we worked so closely with Rockchip uh, for the Python Pro. Um, but usually we don't have... Uh, any means of you know uh, of of asking the vendor for to 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 alter um uh, to alter the soc to 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 our requirements uh, you would you would have to have you know be a much much bigger business yeah in other words buy more pine stuff and it may happen i'm i'm only half joking yeah half joking but yeah i mean you uh, you know it's 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 if you think about it it's pretty amazing the sort of work that rockchip put in uh, to accommodate us and from their perspective you know if domestically uh, in china they are a huge vendor right of socs so to them our volumes are not that particularly significant so 
uh, the only you know uh, the, the the fact that they wanted to engage with us and that they went to such extent uh, extensive uh, reaches just to accommodate what we wanted to do you know it's um, um, these sort of companies it, usually work in like selling you quantities of like hundreds of thousands of chips correct and pine is uh is grown significantly but not that big yet question mark <laughs> yeah not not that big no what about a game controller case you know what uh no for two reasons um i mean not not a not a completely custom case no it's there are enough good usb uh, c uh, reference designs which can be customized you know to to be to meet our uh, needs um that there simply is no point in uh, in designing a custom one which and you know molding and doing all the plastics all the internals it it, it costs a fortune right so if you can if you can take a reference design that's good alter it uh slightly so aesthetically maybe you know maybe do s minor remolding to improve things maybe better switches maybe better uh thumb pads maybe a better d-pad whatever um you know uh um it it just doesn't make sense right because there's so many game controls out there already and the second thing is that uh, games and you know if you launch uh, RetroArch and you plug in a, a USB-C controller into the Pine phone it automatically works right it just works with uh, if were we to make a custom designed controller it would have to use I2C and you know Martin will be probably better at, at, at telling you the extent of the hassle this would cause but probably it would be some uh, sorry what <laughs> <laughs> I was distracted by a lot of notifications. How much a pain would it be to have to integrate like a game controller add-on for the Pine phone via I squared C instead of USB? Um, I'll leave you guys with this question for like two minutes. I'll be right back. It would be basically the same as the the current keyboard case, I guess. You just have to map the controls to something different, and lock input will be more difficult to require more kernel modules yeah well on the other hand with a usb gamepad that already exists if it works on like a linux pc it would work on the pine phone basically yes so that already kind of works so if you want to play games on your pine phone or whatever go to the store buy a usb gamepad plug into your pine phone and it just works i'm just I've just been using a Steam controller for it over Bluetooth. I don't know if I've used my Steam controller on that. Like I've tried to uh, run uh, PS2 emulation on mine on my uh, Pine Phone Pro. That was fun. <laughs> I've beaten some people in the Open Arena community event thing using a uh, Pine Phone and a controller. We need to have another game night. S yeah, sometime yeah. soon. Been a while. Definitely. See any questions that I could answer while he's away? Uh, ch -ch -ch. And I am back, but you can pick a question. And as I said, we will be moving probably to the casual chats in some two, three minutes. Yeah, something like that. It seems like people are just having a chat on of their own, really here already. Yeah, I'm looking through that. Let's see. More of an opinion question. How would you feel if an RK thirty five eighty eight device there was a new came out people dailing your hardware as their main desktop? Could you repeat? I, I didn't catch it. Uh, how would you feel like I think we could simplify the question here if I'm understanding it correctly. How would you feel if there was a significant number of people daily driving your hardware as their main desktop? As the main desktop, how would I feel? I think that's their question. That would be pretty crazy. Um, I'll I'll tell you another spoiler from from the uh, from the Pine Phone poll, right? I am absolutely floored by how many people daily drive their Pine Phone. Now, I again I don't want to tease and spoil like uh, you know you know the the poll, right? Because I think it's going to be fun for everybody to read the report while I well, once I write it, but. I did not expect such a large number of users to to uh, 
uh, use their phone daily, right? There's a, a lot of people who use their phone as, as, a, as a secondary uh, or the Pine phone as a secondary phone. And this I get, absolutely. And this is what I expected, right? Yeah. But there are a lot of people. I'm not saying most, or, or I'm, not say, I'm not saying the majority or whatever, but I'm just saying there's a lot of people who um, who run their uh, Pine phone as their daily driver. So this already absolutely blows my mind, you know, that there are people in the world who, who run our hardware uh, out there, and, you know, they must be in uh, a substantial number of them. I mean... Uh, the 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 sample which we have in our poll is not a representative sample, and in, in terms of uh, quantity, it represents uh, less than five percent of people who purchase a Pine phone. So, like we we can't really extrapolate and, and say you know that this indicates how many people overall from the community run run their Pine phone. But uh, it, this has been mind blowing to me. So if yeah, people but yeah, going back a bit to that like looking at the laptop sort of things like for a while now i know a lot of people have been using the pinebook pro as at least their daily laptop if not their daily like desktop main machine or so on like mm -hmm. even me like i have some nice laptops like one with like a nice core i7 and nvidia 1660 ti no like basically everywhere i go i'm carrying the pinebook pro seriously mm -hmm. and i know Lucas, you've mostly been doing the same for a few years now, haven't you? Like you've written most of the like blog posts on yours, haven't you? Yeah, like I've I've used my um, I've, practically for the past half a year. Uh, um, I used exclusively the uh, Pinebook Pro as my only computer. Like I've been traveling and stuff. So yeah, and uh, you know, I know uh, I know that there are. A lot of people out there who who, who use their Pinebook Pros, uh, and and obviously there's a lot of people who use their Pine phones. It's it always blows my mind that there are so many people who who use our uh, equipment on a daily basis. Um, I was talking to uh, to Dalton the other day, uh, how I went into a hacker space in a uh, relatively small um, uh, European city. And I just needed to 3D print something. And uh, the guy uh, recognized me, you know, and he was like, and, and he pulled out a pine phone out of his pocket. He's like, oh, you the guy, <laughs> you're Lucas. And I'm like, you're getting recognized. <laughs> and, and, this, and at the most random, small, you know, city in Central Europe, you know, uh, was was mind blowing, you know. And uh, and he took me to uh, to the guy who started the hacker space, and that guy had a pine phone. So you know, uh, there's there's a lot of, of, wow. of this, and it absolutely it always it always floors me, you know. But then you look at the numbers, and there there has been a lot of these things that shipped, and um, and yeah. I'm looking forward to going to the first like you know Fostum type event uh, when it's going to be you know uh, when it's going to be held in person, just to see all of these people running around with their pine phones is going to be <laughs> frankly speaking quite surreal. I need to get over to that side of the ocean for Fosdom sometime. Yeah, you absolutely have to. Okay, guys. Um, there's I, I see that there's still stuff in the chat. Um, but, yeah. Okay, There's I see that there's still many questions unanswered, but we have been running for over an hour at this point. Well over an hour. An hour and a half well at this point. Well over an hour. And my throat is sore from, from, from talking. So I invite you all just to jump into casual hangout. Uh, don't be shy. Say, say hi to, to others. Uh, grab, yourself a, uh, you know, grab yourself a beer and, and kick back and, and ask me there any questions. Right? Thank you so much. I hope this was both informative and, uh, uh, and, and fun to everybody who joined. I'm sorry uh, for, the, uh, for the stream uh crashing over on on peer tube i uh i wasn't aware um this is gonna happen so a bummer about that sorry to people in irc uh next quarter we definitely gonna uh prepare a little bit better uh, for this right okay thank you guys i'm stopping the recording now and i am grabbing myself a second beer and going to um, yeah, casual hangout one. I'll go grab a beer too. I just, I guess we'll go in the casual hangout <laughs> yeah. one. I, I just set it to 30 users. We'll see how that okay. goes. I can go up or down as needed. Good. All right. So yeah, for everyone still listening, we'll be over there in a second, I guess. <laughs>